Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com. This is episode 50 of Learn Lightroom 5. In this episode, I'm going to explain the difference between some of the sliders that are in the basic panel compared to some of the sliders that are in the tone curve panel. You know, I've been doing these Lightroom videos for just over a year, and I rarely received any questions about the tone curve until very recently. And actually, I've received quite a few very recently from people asking me, what's the difference between uh, the basic panel adjustments and the tone curve adjustments? Well, in this video, I'm going to try to explain the difference. Now, to illustrate what these sliders do, I'm using a black and white image. I just believe that taking color out of the equation, it makes it a lot easier to see what these sliders are doing to your image. Also, I'm going to be talking and referring to the histogram a lot. And let me briefly explain what the histogram is for those that don't know. The histogram is a plot of every single pixel in the image. The pixels that are absolute black are plotted to the far left on the histogram. The pixels that are absolute white are plotted to the far right. Varying shades of gray are between those two points. Now, the height of the histogram refers to how many of that specific shade of gray is in the image. So the higher uh, the, the peak of the histogram, that's implying, like right here, that whatever shade of gray is represented by that peak, that's the most common shade of gray in the image. So I hope that made sense with the histogram. Now I'm going to just briefly jump down to the tone curve to explain that in Lightroom, there's actually two different tone curves. There's the region curve and the point curve. Right now I have the region curve open. You can see it says region right here. Now the point curve, you can see down here in the lower right hand corner there's this little icon. If you click on that, that is now the point curve. And it is different than the region curve. It does the same thing, but it's different. And I'm going to explain that in more detail in a minute. For the beginning of this video though, we're going to use the region curve to explain what these sliders do. Now, I'm going to jump up and we're going to go to the highlight slider. And we're going to mainly mess with highlights in this video. It applies to shadows too. There's no sense in making the video twice as long to explain the same thing with shadows. So highlights. When I hover over the highlights sh uh, slider, if you look up at the histogram, you could see that this specific part of the histogram gets highlighted. That's implying that when I slide this slider, that is the part of the histogram that is going to be affected by that slider. Well, that's not really true. I'm going to take the slider and move it to the right and watch the histogram up on top. You can see it gets kind of stretched like a rubber band to the right. Even pixels that were over here are being affected. They're being made brighter. If I go to the left, they're being scrunched towards the left. And those pixels that were here in a more mid-tone area were being made darker. They're staying as mid-tones, but they're being made darker. Now, let me uh, maximize the highlights just for a second and try to burn what that looks like in your brain right there, okay? That uh, graphical representation right here of the histogram. Now I'm going to reset it and we're going to jump down to the tone curve and I'm going to go to the highlight slider here. Now remember the other one looked like it was being stretched out to the right like a rubber band. Now watch this one as I move it to the right. It really affects affects the image in an entirely different way. It doesn't really just slide pixels over towards brighter, you know, towards the right. It actually slides some, but which makes them double up, and it kind of uh, leaves some alone. It's kind of hard to explain. Now if you look at the actual tone curve itself, when I highlight, or when I hover over the highlight slider, you could see that the specific part of the tone curve kind of gets a highlight on it. So right there, you can see that. So that's implying that that is the part of the tone curve that is actually being moved when I slide this slider. And let's watch. And you can see it is. Th so the tone curve is being affected from that point to, uh, if I slide down it's going to move, but you can see what I mean, to that specific area. So that is affecting the highlight slider. Now when you look at this image, 
it doesn't look all that different, to tell you the truth. You can see I'll move the, the tone curve highlight slider to 100 and see what the image looks like. Then we'll go to the highlight slider up here and move it. And it might look a little more flat, I think, with this uh, specific uh, basic slider being slid as opposed to that one. I think that one gives a little more um, depth to the image. That's why a lot of professional photographers actually prefer using the sliders in the tone curve when they adjust their images. All right. Now to better graphically show what these sliders do, I'm going to use this image here. This is an image of my cat I just took yesterday. He was in the window behind my desk and I purposely um, metered on his his face, specifically right here on his eye, because I wanted I wanted the entire background blown out. I wanted this to be a super high key image. Now we're going to go up to the tone curve, or I'm sorry, to the histogram, and you could see this kind of you know the histogram obviously is going to be mostly to the right because most of the pixels are white, and we're going to turn on the clipping indicator right here by clicking on it. You can see whatever is red is is total white, no detail at all. Now we're going to go to the highlight shadow, or the highlight slider, and we're going to slide that to the right. And we get more of the image, obviously, that's going to be blown out, clipped white. But I want you to make note, we have some detail here, some detail here, and some detail up here. Let's just look maybe at the top, um, you know, inch, inch and a half of this image. And you can see there's some detail there. I'm going to put this slider back. We're going to go down to the tone curve and I'm going to move the highlights to the right. And you can see that top inch, inch and a half, it's gone. It's nothing. It, it effectively uh, clipped more of those uh, areas up here than this one did. So that's just kind of proving that these adjustments are different and they do different things. So for you, what I would encourage you to do is try both and see in your specific image that you happen to be doing that day, maybe you'll like the way that the highlight slider works better in the tone curve, in the region tone curve, than it does in the basic panel. It's something to keep in mind and something to try out. Now, let's go concentrate a little more on the um, tone curve itself. Uh, down here, excuse me, I'm starting to lose my voice. We have these three kind of anchor points right here that are actually on the tone curve itself. Now, right here where this far right one is, you can see it says 75. That's just an indicator of where it is from 0 to 100 on this uh, tone curve itself. This is kind of the center point of the adjustment that we're going to affect with the highlight slider. That is everything to the left and right of that will be adjusted. This one is an anchor point for that adjustment, that, that highlight slider. So nothing below this point will be affected. So as you can see as I move it, this is kind of the center point of the curve and that's the anchor point. So nothing to the left of this got affected when I move that. Now you could move these around. I'm going to move that to the right. And I'm going to move this, let's say, to around 77. Now the center point is right there at 90. And the anchor point is very close at 78. And now watch when I move that. Now you could see it just affected a very little area of the tone curve. Now this image, again, isn't probably as great an image to uh, see that. So let's move that one to 90 and let's move this one to like, what I say, I have it 78-ish, 79. Try it right there. And we're gonna take the highlight slider and we have this little spike and it just affected just the absolute highlights that are out here in the clouds. It really didn't affect anything else in the image. Let me reset it, move it to the right and you can see so with the tone curve, you could get very specific of what you want to adjust and how you want to adjust it by taking these little regions with these uh, sliders that are at the bottom of the tone curve. Also, you could use, we covered this in the past, 
targeted adjustments by just clicking on this little tool right here. And you can see our cursor turns into the tool. And as I move along the image, you can see that the um, a little point moves around the tone curve. And we could actually affect a specific part of the image. Also, if you look very carefully at the tone curve, in the background, very faint, is the histogram itself. So it kind of gives you an idea of what, uh, how many pixels you may be affecting as you move this targeted adjustment tool around. Now again, let's say I want to go right there. You can see I'm way at the top um, of the tone curve because I'm at the probably the brightest thing in the image is this cloud right here. Now when I click down with the left mouse button, the cursor is going to disappear. Now I'm going to push straight up and you can see it's pushing the tone curve straight up right at that point and we're just affecting that targeted area that we wanted to target so it just gives you an idea and you can see it moved the highlights slider a little bit so that is some more specifics about the tone curve so in general the basic panel sliders highlights shadows will give you a broader adjustment it really just kinda slides the entire histogram to the right the tone curve can be more specific and you could make it even more specific by using these uh, anchor point sliders down here at the bottom. Now, the other thing to talk about is the point curve. We click on this and we get rid of the sliders and now we have a point, we have just a, the tone curve itself. And you could put points on this curve by clicking on it. You can see? So we're going to put an anchor point here and Right now it's actually a pivot point because we just have one watch. I'm going to go between these two points and click down and push up. And you can see how it pivots around this point. Now I want to take this point off. All i got to do is grab it and pull it off the curve. Now I'm going to put another point there. So we have these double points. Now that's more of an anchor point. And you can see it's not affecting the bottom as much. So you could kind of uh, come in here and affect just a specific part or range of your image. We, we're not affecting the uh, shadows and the blacks as much when we adjust these this way. So we're just going to pull those all off. Now a lot of people prefer using the point curve. A lot of people prefer using the region curve. Uh, when I probably I would say two years ago I, I preferred the point curve but now I've been using the region curve more and more so it's something to keep in mind there might be an image where the region curve works better for you there might be another um, image where the point curve works better for you so it's up to you so that's for highlights and the same would apply to shadows uh, shadows would work very similarly uh, it's just going to be this part of the uh, tone curve and it's going to affect the left as I highlight you can see that left hand band of the histogram. Now whites and blacks are a little different. If I take on this image here and I take um, whites and I move it all the way to the right you can see we blow out a big chunk of the image and it really pushed the histogram way to the right. You can see that? Okay so this is a big swath, a big chunk of the image got turned really white. Now there's no whites down here but we have lights and you can see that it affects a larger part of the tone curve compared to the highlights. So we're going to go to the lights and we're going to move that to the right. And you can see it brightened the image similar to the way the uh, white slider up here in the basic panel did, but it didn't brighten it as much. Okay, so I'm going to reset that and let's go back up here to whites. You can see it really was a dramatic change. You can see all the clipping that's going on because I have that clipping indicator on. Okay, and then back here to lights, and you can see it's not as much. Now, uh, that's really it, I guess. Uh, you know, to try to explain the difference again, I'll just uh, say it again: is you could get a little more specific to the tones you want to adjust if you use the tone curve. It's more of a general adjustment when you use the sliders that are in the basic panel. All right. Um, I hope that was clear. It's kind of a hard uh, subject to explain. So if uh, anyone has any questions about it, 
post the uh, question below and I'll do my best to try to answer it. All right? I'd like to thank everyone that watches my videos. Thank you very, very much. Um, if you guys could do me a favor and subscribe to my YouTube channel, I'd really appreciate that. Okay? I'll talk to you guys soon.